Hi, this is Christina Subotina. Welcome to my YouTube channel about investments. The purpose of this channel is to help you make smarter investment decisions. Today, I have a special guest, John Stain, the Betterment CEO and founder. Hi, John. Hi, Christina. Great to be here with you. Oh, very, very nice to meet you. And uh, today we will be talking about investments and how to make uh, better investment decisions. John is an expert. Uh, the first question that I wanted to know, John, is what are the main pillars of financial freedom? Uh, for example, uh, some people say savings accounts, you have to have three or five months to kind of don't depend on your salary, paying off debt, or off IRA, 401k, you know better. So <laughs> I'll, I'll give it to you. Yeah, a lot of financial advice comes back to similar kinds of principles. Take care of your debts and build savings over time. That's because most of us, although we're so different and we all have different needs throughout our lives, we're earning rather less in our early years. We start to earn more in later years and then we have to fund like retirement and maybe kids' colleges and other things like later in life. Uh, and so uh, as a path to, uh, to building savings, it really, it, Depends on where you are, but the kinds of there's maybe five steps that I would recommend to anyone who's watching this uh, to to kind of make sure that they're doing things in, in the right sequence. Um, mm -hmm. The first of those I would say is like always make your minimum debt payments. You don't want to you know see any penalties, or uh, you certainly don't want your home to be foreclosed, right? So always make your minimum de debt payments first. That that should be a, a no brainer and the first thing that that people do with their money. Uh, the yeah. second be to take advantage of any 401k match that you might have um, because that's just free money right if, if from your employer yeah exactly from your employer if, if they're if they're matching three percent of your salary put in three percent of your salary you're going to double that money immediately that's a no-brainer right so i like yeah that's a, that's a free lunch as, as we call it the third yes. would be to pay off your high interest rate debts first and when I think about a high interest rate debt, I'm generally thinking about 5% or greater uh, mm -hmm. is a high interest rate. So pay those down. If you have interest rates less than 5%, as some people might on a mortgage or on a low cost student loan, you might just do the minimum payments on that. And, and, and then that allows you to save more um, and you might be able to more than make up for that kind of uh, interest rate through your savings and investments. So it's probably smarter to save rather than to pay that low interest rate debt. Because when you invest, you can make more than 5%. So that kind of smarter way to put your money. Okay. You can, you can. and especially if you have a long-term view and you stay the course, right? In any given year, you might make more than 5%. You might lose money, but like on average and over time through investing, you might expect to make more than 5%. So that's why, that's why that, that metric. Um, okay. And then uh, fourth, I'd say, you know, have a safety net, right? Like you've, uh, you've, you've paid down high interest rate debt. Um, if you lose your, uh, if you lose your job, um, as unfortunately lots, lots of people have recently, um, you want to be like, okay, for a period of time. So I recommend six months of, of Mom. cash to cover your expenses. Now that's not six months of your salary because your salary is generally pre-tax. Um, and sometimes you're saving a piece of it, but it's enough to make sure you, you can, can comfortably cover six months of your expenses. Um, and you want to put that probably in a low risk, uh, investment account or even just a savings account. Um, now you don't want to save more than say six months worth of expenses into that safety net because after mm -hmm. a time um, you'll accumulate more and more in there and you, you, you're not actually earning a lot. You're not taking any risk with that money. It's like a very safe investment. Uh, and so if you have more than that, you want to be investing it. And that brings us to the fifth bucket, um, which is now you're comfortable. You've got uh, you've got your debt sorted, you've got your safety net sorted, save for your long-term goals. Uh, and you want to have a financial plan that's personalized to you with, uh, with uh, uh, investments, funding, retirement, kids' college, house down payment, whatever those financial goals are, um, you, know, uh, uh, you, can, you can create a plan that addresses each of them and, and has you investing appropriately for each of them. Perfect. Perfect. And uh, what about um, Roth IRA, IRA, HSA? Uh, that's, uh, they all come into the investment bucket, uh, as I understand correctly. Would you prioritize them? So if um, I have, um, I don't know, a couple of thousand left, 
where, where should I put my money first? The 401k uh, is, is maybe the first rate, especially if you have a match. Yeah. Um, that's it. That's yeah. a smart place Free to money. Get. We've got to get that. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, and if you have that 401k, um, that can be a good spot to, to top up. Now, if you, um, if you've already, um, you know, contributed your, your, your match there, you might consider opening a Roth IRA, particularly if you're a younger um, saver with say less than $100,000 of income using round, round numbers. Um, that can be a great option because you'll pay tax on it today at a relatively lower um, uh, tax rate. And then when you draw from it later in retirement, um, you get to withdraw from it tax free when maybe your tax rate will be higher, maybe you'll have more, more income later. So it's a good way uh, of, of saving, particularly for younger, for younger um, high earners. Um, uh, and, and future high earners. Um, and then HSA are an amazing account. If you can get an HSA and that makes sense for you, given your health plan, you need a high deductible health plan. It's the only triple tax benefited plan. Betterment offers a, a great um, uh, HSA. Uh, and, uh, and that's a way to save for future healthcare expenses. You don't pay tax on the way in, you don't pay tax on the way out, and you don't pay tax while the, the money is growing in that account. Um, so that's a that's a unique triple tax benefit on on the HSA. So uh, Roth IRA is good for those who have um, less than certain amount of salaries, 130, 140 per year, if uh, if I remember correctly. But there is a way to still use that uh, when you do like a backdoor uh, Roth IRA, right? Um, so you can do that with HSA. Do you think it's good for everybody to save for future medical bills, or only if you know that? you expect higher medical bills than, um, than others. I think it's smart for everyone to save in that account. Um, you know, you can, uh, there are a, a range of things you can spend uh, that money on, like medical bills is a pretty, pretty broadly defined and it seems to be occupying a bigger and bigger share of, uh, of expenses um, for, for older folks. I don't think anyone's at risk of not using all of the, all of that money um, <laughs> and on like, you know, families, medical bills and stuff like that. So it's, it's a pretty broad definition as, as, as I understand it. And also one little wrinkle, I'm curious, where would you keep, for example, money for down payment? If a person is saving up, where would you put it? it depends on um, when you're going to make the down payment. If it's within the next year, um, Betterment's advice would say, invest that very conservatively, um, you know, mm -hmm. You know, no more than say 15% stocks. And the reason is you might want to have a little bit of, uh, of exposure to, to the market so that you can earn a little bit more um, with, like a, a, um, a, with, with those funds. But you also want to make sure you have the down payment, right? You don't want it to disappear. If you've got a little yeah. more time um, and you can uh, endure some you know, ups and downs and you've got time if the market drops to sort of like earn it back, you want to invest more aggressively. So if you have like five years before you're going to make the home purchase and you're, and you're saving early, you could invest in more like a 40% stock, 60% bonds. Um, but our, our advice would uh, on the site would help to guide you through those kinds of trade-offs. Gotcha. Okay, that's, that's um, really great. And so if you're a beginner investor, just to summarize, you want to pay off your high interest debt, you want to match uh, for 1K because it's free money, and then you want to start investing. And here you have Roth IRA, you have IRA, HSA. Did I miss something? We well, wrote for, for a beginner investor, I would say um, you could remember that um, investing early is, is better than late, right? Time's on your side. And when you're uh, when you're in your 20s is a great time to start to invest um, because you've just got dec another de more, decades more of compounding. And <laughs> compound interest. Right. Like maybe you can double your money roughly in every decade that you're saving. If you're, if you're investing it at you know, normal rates of sort of 7 8% returns, you're going to end up doubling your money every decade. Um, we, uh, we'd say uh, to make it personal, as I mentioned, so make sure that your investments match your needs. So, you know, if you're ready to save for retirement and you're doing that in IRAs and 401ks and other accounts, great. But if you're saving for that down payment, you're going to invest a little bit differently. So personalize it to match your strategy. Um, and then um, be patient. Remember that if you have a long-term horizon, if you are saving for something like retirement um, and the market is volatile today, that doesn't really matter. Just 
keep contributing, stay the course, be patient. Remember that things will go um, you know, up and down over time. And those who've been in the market through many cycles know that it, it pays to be patient and to stay the course. It's so funny that you said that, but your own parents call you and demand you to, to take out cash <laughs> and leave the stock market. So uh, how, how do you convince yourself, your parents, that you have to hold on to it? So yeah, it, it's hard, right? And like you're, I think you're you're referring to like in the in the volatility in uh, March 2020 when um, markets were reacting so strongly to the pandemic, and you know the stock market was down 30 percent on literally the worst day in the markets. My my parents called me and said, John, like we you know we we think we should you know sell sell off some of our stocks and you know like move a little bit more to cash just to have a bigger safety net. And I was like. This you is know, the time to buy, guys. What, what, what have we talked about? Like, you know, I'm your son. I like, I like, um, all I do is talk about, you know, staying the course in these times. And fortunately, um, you know, um, although they had already acted by the time, like I, I spoke with them, it was like a very small portion of their, uh, of their uh, investments that they moved um, uh, within the Betterment platform. And, you know, more, more than 90% of it, um, they, they didn't touch, but I, uh, I said, you know, the same thing I would say, which is like, just reacting to emotions and reacting to headlines is the wrong way. The, the, the right way is to have a plan. And I said, you know, said to them, like, you have a plan, you already have enough set aside for like the next couple of years, you're fine. Um, you don't need access um, to, to this money. So just stay the course. But I get it. I know it's hard to do, especially when everything you read is, you know, triggering emotional responses, uh, which is why we at Betterment, you know, are we're very customer aligned from like a values driven approach. Like we don't surface like, you know, negative headlines and the kinds of things that other sites kind of stuff, you know, in your face um, because yeah. they want you to trade those other sites. They want you to make bad decisions because that's how they make money. We make money when our customers make more money. We make more money when our customers have more money. Um, and so like we feel very aligned to our customers' long-term best. Interest. Yeah, incentives are aligned. Yeah, I honestly, during from March to May, I bought and all my stocks are positive right now because everything that you bought in March, now you, you <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> so it's like when, when others are fearful, you act and when uh, uh, people are positive, then you hold. <laughs> That's kind of the, the story. Okay, so uh, here's the basics that you need to do for financial freedom. Everything is clear. And a full um, uh, young investor, they, in addition to doing the traditional steps, um, what are the investments that you think will be making the highest return in the future, in the next 10, 20 years, because the U.S. economy has been rising for 20 years. So many experts, um, uh, including Warren Buffett, he's been saying that U.S. economy probably and his funds specifically will not be doing as great as before. So don't expect those results. So um, what do you think about that? How to invest in that situation and specifically uh, Vanguard? Uh, and they allowed me to share that. Um, because I was um, thinking about engaging them as an advisor. They, they told me that, for example, my Roth IRA in retirement account, they will be focusing on international market. So it, it, growth stocks for them is not Amazon, is international market. Interested to learn your opinion. So we don't have a crystal ball about where where market is going and neither does anybody else um you know people True. have been saying um international is undervalued um relative to the u.s for um the last decade and international has <laughs> really underperformed um underperformed um over the last decade that's not to say that won't change but it is to say that like don't listen to the people who say like they can tell you like, you know, this is the right asset class or like this is the hot thing to invest in because it might be right, they might be wrong, you know, more often than not, um, if you're paying them for that recommendation, whatever you're paying them is, 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 is money lost, right? Like you're gonna, it's gonna be, the, the, the recommendation is worth zero. So like paying for it is, um, is not worthwhile. What we do and what we recommend is not worrying about the things that you can't control like 
what sector is going to be hot? Is it going to be biotech? Is it going to be, you know, oil and gas? Is it going to be, um, you know, uh, CPG or whatever? Um, but, uh, but focusing on the things that you can control, like how much are you contributing? Do you have your money allocated appropriately for your goals, the right kind of time horizon for your goals? Are you thinking about taxes and optimizing for after tax income? Um, those are things that we as an advisor can provide alpha around. We can provide real value to our customers. And that's where we focus and where we recommend our customers focus. Perfect. Yeah. So I, I guess here you, um, you're you talking about building uh, a plan and, and diversified portfolio. Uh, and, the, and both of them, they kind of help you to ride any wave, any market um, uh, direction. So if it's going to be international market, you have a part in portfolio international markets and you will get kind of that average return. So you don't lose everything. Maybe you wouldn't win everything, right? Because you are diversified. I'm just curious for young investors um, with 10, 20 years investment horizon, what would be the exposure to international markets? Like what would be percentage that you would recommend? Our model changes over the years based on how much um, uh, we feel like the, um, how much the data shows that the um, uh, expected returns are for each asset class. So we use a black Letterman optimization. It's a common, common model to allocate um, a global portfolio. Um, and, um, and we derive expected returns based on what the market is saying, um, you know, uh, they, they ought to be. Um, so, uh, uh, that we update, uh, our investment committee updates from time to time today, international represents, um, something like 30 to 40% of a typical, you know, high, high, uh, stock portfolio for, uh, for a U.S. investor. Um, and, uh, that's pretty high. That's pretty high. And it reflects global asset allocations. Um, uh, gotcha. and so it's the, it's the empirically, you know, least biased, you know, most consistent way to do this. So we're not just taking how we feel or what one expert says, but we're taking like the market's interpretations, averaging, uh, and doing what the data indicates, uh, is right for customers. Now that doesn't mean we're going to perform better than somebody else. It means we're going to like try and get like the best return on average at the lowest cost for our customers. And like really instead optimizing around like the other stuff I was talking about, about like where we, where we can really add, add a lot of value relative to others. Gotcha. That's really good advice. I, I, I really like it. Um, especially for people who do not have time to do the investment research, to do the allocation. Um, they're focusing on what they're doing the best is making money to be able to invest and being consistent with investing that money. Okay, and uh, the last question here is, how do you invest personally? Asset allocation, investment horizon, tell us all your secrets. Huh. So <laughs> my, my secrets are like, I, I'm like maybe the least likely person to have founded a company in, in this industry of, uh, of investment uh, management because it is not something I wanna spend a lot of time doing. I really like to sort of outsource the, the decision, which is part of why I created a company that helps people. Like, <laughs> These decisions, <laughs> including you, <laughs> including me. So I, you know, my goals are to renovate um, my house um, that I'm living in, and so I'm I'm saving for for future renovations. I'm saving for my kids' college. I'm saving for retirement, uh, and I have a safety net fund. Um, and uh, and I have uh, those goals set up in my Betterment account. I have like funds allocated to each of them. The retirement is like the most aggressive portfolio. That's going to be heavy, heavy in stocks for my wife and my retirement portfolio. Um, and then for the house renovations and the safety net, like those are near term goals. And so like those are very conservative, mostly in cash and bonds. Gotcha. And I'm curious, uh, do you invest in individual companies? I don't. Um, I don't have any you single don't. stocks. Um, there was a time I did, right? When I first graduated college, I kind of like tried to, you know, beat the market, like maybe lots of people do when they're they're just starting out investing. And I found yes. that I won some and I lost some. And on average, I was doing about the same as the market, which is actually pretty good, like, you know, relative to the stats. Because <laughs> uh, uh, most yes. people who pick individual stocks significantly underperform uh, an indexed approach. Um, and everyone thinks they're, they're going to be the one. I thought I was going to be the one who like got away with it and like did, did a little bit better. Um, but over 90% of people 
fail to perform as well as the market when they pick individual stocks? Yeah, not only people, but even professional fund managers. <laughs> Those who make a living out of that, <laughs> they fail. Um, okay, that's been John Stain, CEO and founder of Betterment. Betterment is a platform that helps you to make smart investment decisions. Um, they help you to invest uh, in uh, ETFs and index funds. They help you also to create your financial plan. They help you with HSA account, uh, Roth IRA, IRA. Did I forget something, John? 401ks, uh, uh, 401ks. and accounts, joint accounts. We do, we do it all. Yes, and Robo Advisor. I have a video and I will attach it here uh, about um, how it's, it's a good idea to start investing with a Robo Advisor. And in addition to Betterment, there are other options: Wealthfront, Wealth Simple, and you can compare all of them. But the main point, and that's how exactly I started investing. You just set your goal, you allocate your budget, and you set up direct repeating deposit, and that's it. You started investing, um, and you just don't withdraw the money. <laughs> the main and the main secret with that just keep it keep doing it thank you so much john it was really nice having you thank you thanks christina it's a lot of fun <laughs>